Mr. Walton, did you make contact with Alien? Were you taken to another planet, to a mothership? How did they communicate with... Can you tell me what they look like? Can you tell me how many of them there were? Were you, were you given food? But the teachers are alive. They're not books. They are the very living essences of nature itself. What a strange person. Unbelievably powerful supercomputer that's running our reality, and we don't have a clue yep. as to how to operate it. So when maybe you or somebody else creates an AGI system, and you get to ask her one question, what would that question be? What's outside the simulation? Say in your mind, say to yourself, I am more than my physical body because I am more than physical matter. I can perceive that which is greater than the physical world. Broadcasting from New York, upstate near the Great Lakes, it's Lighting the Void, and I'm your host, Joe Roop. We're live on the Fringe FM KTLK Digital Broadcasting. It is almost the end of the week. It just got through, no, it's actually, it's hump day, but watching the inauguration, yeah, that was depressing. But anyways, thanks for joining us on the live broadcast. We are always live here five nights a week, 9 p.m. Pacific to 11 following uh troubled minds radio and right before the secret teachings with ryan gable i want to give a big shout out to jess rogie tonight that was a long time coming for jess rogie uh she's been prepping to do that radio show her radio show for a long long time so that was her debut and she did fantastic so i want to give a big shout out to jess rogie if you want to join our chat room you can go to the fringe.fm forward slash chat room that'll send you right to our discord server and if you want to call into this show you can call into the show at 1-800-588-0335. Tonight, uh, we're going to have a special guest coming on shortly. Teresa Chung is going to be here with us. Uh, but it's all about this topic that we're discussing tonight that I think uh, we're going to get back into the realms of consciousness and dreaming. And I, this kind of is a play off of, um, you know, what Michael was talking about, about, you know, we don't know what the world we live in. And I want to talk about perspective tonight. Um and here's some of the things that, that, that has really been on my mind lately. You know, I've had some wild and crazy vivid dreams lately, and I'm starting to think that maybe dreams have a consciousness of their own. We discussed this the other night and, uh, I got Rohan here as well as the night stalker. So we're going to, we're going to dive deep into this. And Rohan actually has a story about his name that has everything to do with dreams. But there's also this archetypal thing that happens that I want to discuss with these gentlemen too. And with you guys, if you want to call in, we'll go ahead and open the phone lines up from the jump. But if consciousness, uh, if dreams have a consciousness of their own, which if you've read any Carl Jung, then you probably would say, well, that's very true. Then what is the language which our spirit and the unconscious speaks to us with? Now, I have to think that that language is symbolism, archetypes, even a lot of the uh, stuff that we see in astrology and tarot when it comes to initiation, those symbols and magic and occultism as well. But 
if we learn to be fully awake in our waking life, what we call our waking life now, then can we learn to wake up in a dream? And joining me tonight for the first uh, here at, at the beginning of the broadcast is the Night Stalker. Welcome, brother. Thanks for coming What's on. What's going on, brother? What's and, happening, Rohan? And my new favorite brother from another mother, Rohan. I don't know. Maybe he disappeared, but he was here. Um, is he there? Yeah, I don't know. Rohan, you here, brother? Mm, anyways, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get him back on. I don't know. Maybe he muted himself or something. But uh, here's the thing. Like, Hi, guys. How's it going? Nice to be here. Yeah, there you go. What's going on, brother? <laughs> where, where, you disappeared for a second. Yeah, um, I am mean, no. Now, here's the thing. Yeah, I'm there, man. You, your name, you were telling us before. I want to I want to get into this, and then we can kind of spin off of this. Your name, Rohan. There's a story behind that, too. Is it like an archetypal story? Well, basically, I, I heard on the internet, and I don't want to name drop because it's someone I'm always criticizing, but I got a good idea from someone I don't like from the internet. And, uh, and they said, um, I know, I know, I know. But, but it, it was, but it, it's good. Idea. Some people come up with good stuff and then they go off track, don't they? But anyway, so I had this idea, this notion to uh, when you get those rare states, when you, you know, you're sort of waking up and you know, you're, you know, you're in your room and you know, you're asleep, but your dream is still going on. Right. I think it's the loose, whatever. But I don't remember my dreams much. So that's very rare for me. But one time I had this notion to ask myself what my name is. Because I figured your mm -hmm. your name you get given is just some arbitrary, you know, common social name, isn't it? So I asked the question, and I got an answer almost before I finished saying it. So I thought, I got Rohan, and I thought I'd made it up. I thought that's not a name; that's like a Ronin or a Rogan Josh meal, you know. But I looked it up, and it's a real name. And it turns out it all of the symbolism for all that name perfectly matches me. Do you know what I mean? So I looked it up, and I told what symbolism was. The first one was a. Uh, it means Rowan. It's like an Irish name, Celtic. Of course, I've got Celtic lineage. I've got two ginger-haired sisters, got an Irish name, nice. surname, and a Scottish uh, grandmother. So fully Celtic. I thought, okay, that works. And it means a fiery one as well, and I'm a fire sign. I thought, okay, that works out. Right. Rohan also is a tree in India, and I was studying Hinduism at the time. And the tree transliteration name means monkey face tree. And I'm born in the year of the monkey. You know what I'm saying? Nice. There was, there so was one you, more. you did you find out about all of this after you after you you know yeah. like that's your yeah. birth name Rohan? No, no, it's a completely different name. No but, one was going to call me Elvis at one point. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but but it's cool that you found out all the like the archetypal stuff about you afterwards, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. Cause I, so I just dismissed it. I mean, I've had so many of these weird things, and you just ignore them, don't you? But then if you happen to get curious and look them up. And they start panning out and you think, hang on a minute. And so, and it feels appropriate. I've never liked my original name. I don't like it. It never felt right, but this one feels okay. So I don't know. That's Maybe there's nothing to it, but it works for me. I say, man, it makes you, so much sense to me though. What were you, Joe? Do you like your name? I my really name, bumped up against my name. My name was uh, like my full name. And I don't think I've ever said it on the air though, is Joseph Daniel Roop, right? So, but the biblical archetypes of Joseph and Daniel are all about, you know, uh, dream interpretations, the magicians and the coat of many colors. Right. So, yeah, I don't mind my name, actually. But, I, you know, like only the people that are really close to me call me Joseph. Right. So uh, Joe I, um... is, is a good name to have. Joe's a good solid American name. But there is some archetypal mm -hmm. stuff there. And if you think about your life and where your soul is going nine times out of ten your name will kind of go with it yeah and they all have, um like there's meanings for them all in gematria too they all have values so i don't have any kids yet but when i do have kids one of the first things i do when i'm picking a name is i'm going to make sure that the gematria value of the name doesn't put them on a wrong path either i think that's pretty well, interesting that's a, that's a and that could, that could factor into really to, to all of it yeah. i think another but, thing too is like that's why daniel joseph really uh, why I followed his work and Doskalos and that stuff so carefully because that stuff just when you, I think when you run into stuff that you're um, you're kind of in line with uh, via your soul or whatever you want to call it consciously like it speaks to you you know yeah. for sure my um, dad my, my, my dad wanted to name me day stalker but my mom wanted a night stalker so sometimes day I stalker. wonder about what, what, what my life would be if I was a day stalker but 
so far well, so good you know no complaints d- dude the or night stalker thing that they put on netflix though man is it's number one trending right now oh, yeah that's hard to watch honestly you watch you it know? i heard it's scary it is scary it. it's almost as and just like last night when, when i was talking to stephen bassett um i wonder everything is perspective right so Michael Strange was talking about this. I believe this too. We're always looking for the truth, but the truth is a lot of time is is could just be perspective. I mean, all we have to do is look at our history and we can tell that that's real. You know, the truth is 100% perspective. All we know is the pictures that they've shown us since we were kids and they tell us what's real, but we all know that a lot of this history is BS. So, and even that, even then, it's all like perspective, right? But if you look into your life, and you and i mean your name your parents uh your surroundings the situation that you're in right now the weird thing is if if you really start to study the occult the esoteric and study symbolism and archetypes and all that stuff you'll start to see a very eerie creepy language that's happened in your life of the symbols in your life and i talk about this all the time like when you start waking up consciously You know, you hear people say they get downloads and stuff all the time, right? But you'll be able to see, like, um, as above, so below type stuff happening in your life all the time. Whether it's your relationships, the job that you're working, the street sign that you see, uh, the weather that day. I mean, if you really start tapping into it, it's almost like that life is a dream in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? know Do you know what, Joe? Can I comment on that? Because you've revealed your full name. Yeah. And you've just said something that kind of speaks to this. I'm going to reveal my full name for a reason other than that. My full name <laughs> is Paul Allen Christopher Teggett, right? And although I don't like the first name, the initials spell the word pact, okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm all about mutuality and inclusion. And I've always had this sense of, like, I've got to remember and be integral and remember everything, probably because mm-hmm. I'm not or whatever, but I've got to remember everything. And I'm all about people coming together and stick into the plan uh, not not the q plan but the plan of like just being good people <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out for each other yeah you know that's the plan that's god's plan that's a good plan you know <laughs> so i don't know i just thought that's interesting as well since you brought it all packed is my initials so there we go yep mm. there's and and the and when you read the bible too a lot of people think that the bible is literal and it, it may very well be but i'm telling you it's super archetypal like it's super archetypal. Most people that have biblical names in some form or fashion, if they read those stories, it'll kind of line up in their life that way too. You know, I'm my, not uh, saying I'm my, the father of uh, Jesus or anything. God, yeah. You know, <laughs> but there's another story of Joseph in the Bible where he wore many colors and was, you know, his favorite son out of all these brothers. And then his all of his brothers got jealous of him and betrayed him, sold him out. But you know what, Joseph he kept going he didn't care he didn't care about their jealousy it hurt him emotionally for sure but he went on into the mystery schools of egypt he became a badass in egypt and everybody loved him and then came back and then still forgave his whole family and it was all good you know yeah well if you think my, about uh, middle name what, Joseph, um, and it's, it, it's, that's uh, cool it's passed on amongst my family my, all my uh my dad and my grandparents all middle names joseph so there um, you go do you think it's do you think it matters that you go by joe though like no. especially when factoring no. in Dramatria, that it has like a di- like I think it matters that Bill Gates goes by Bill and not William, and I think it, I think that was on purpose. Mm-hmm. I think they understand that, and the names the names that they choose to go by in the zeitgeist has a, has like mm-hmm. when you, when you look up these different terms in like the Dramatria calculator, some will match up with Bill Gates, some will match up with William Gates, but they're like um, also this is kind of weird, but Michael Jordan. I think like there's a reason he's Michael. What people call him Michael Jordan and not Mike Jordan. I want to be like, like a, Mike. Everybody wanted to be yeah. like him, didn't they? Yeah. It's kind of like a tongue in cheek, cheek, cheek story where he he hit the game winner in college for North Carolina, and that's kind of when he like kind of came on the map. And like the story he tells is that his dad said that's when he became went from Mike Jordan to Michael Jordan, and it's always just like a funny Michael Jordan story. But uh, I've been thinking about it recently, and it's like that could be when he be, like because Michael Jordan now has different. A d- d- different um, calculation to it, a different uh, total. Yeah, I, I get I get so into that, that gematria like that. and I start seeing it, but uh, but eventually you start going a little crazy, right? Because you start decoding yeah. everything. But 
here's the thing i'm I'm talking about like bigger archetypal stuff like um i don't know rohan you were about to say something a minute ago weren't you do you remember what it was because yeah. i don't want to cut yeah, you off I no no you're all right no it's just that with you saying i just because i've got this crazy memory association thing you just said that oh i don't think i'm like this the father of jesus or anything but if you think about it you did father the fringe fm which is yeah. trying to teach about love <laughs> and coming together do you know what i'm saying the sun yeah the christ force you know like being the one mm. that's how that's mm. essentially what this show is all about is walking the void learning that you're neo all of you mm-hmm right like you're creating everything in your life right now i don't give a crap how bad it is you created it i hate to tell you we've got a, we've got a responsibility for our thoughts because they do stuff we don't jumanji it don't happen instant like jumanji but it does happen that's yeah. the thing it does happen yeah and just like in a dream when you become lucid in a dream you can do anything instantly now it's the dream world right so things happen as fast as thought or emotion right they happen that fast but there's natural law here, the hermetic laws, and this is what I believe, that this is a dream world, but it is ruled and governed by these hermetic laws, right? Vibration, polarity, gender, uh, correspondence, things like that. And when you start understanding these laws and that you're the creator of your dream world, doesn't, think, doesn't mean things happen instantly, but I promise you, I promise you, your environment is perpetual to your thoughts. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, how, how do you change it? I, I I believe that for a while that everything I, I'm experiencing is projection of what's going on internally. That every person that annoy, uh, annoys me is something that I have to deal with myself. But exactly. then there's a huge step. There's a huge step between that realizing that and then making the change. And that's kind of where I where I fall off. You know, like where I, where I don't know how to make that leap. And I like, think it, I think it also happens on a, a, a super conscious level too, right? If people could say, well, how did the politics happen? Well, that's polarity. Well, how did, mm-hmm. uh, how did COVID happen? Well, that's correspondence and vibration. All right. When we got everybody, you know, focused on zombies and the apocalypse and every year up to this point, everybody's like, the end of the world's coming. There's something happening. Oh, I'm scared. Da, 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 da. Right. Well, you're putting out that vibration. And when millions of people are putting out that vibration, guess what? Stuff comes back around, right? We're like in this dream womb that's governed by these hermetic laws that we haven't figured out yet. Once we all figured out figure out that we're Neo, this place is going to be a massive party, man. Yeah, block party. <laughs> it's it's going to be world. awesome. <laughs> you know. But you know, so how do we do I was it, thinking that we. Used... Oh man, it's a good question. What were you saying, Ryan? What? I was just saying. I was just thinking that. Um, that what uh, Nightstock was just saying there, this thing about, because I studied a little bit of psychotherapy and, yeah. they, and they said that exact same thing. They said, look, if there's somebody that you really don't get on with, that you really clash with, the reason is probably because there's an aspect of that person that reflects in yourself that you need to work on that you don't know about yet. That's right. And that's exactly. why you don't like it. Exactly. There's a young exactly. Yeah. I, I, and I, that's why I always look at these tarot readings for like these... Because these people are tapping into this stuff for the archetypes in astrology, like Aries and, you know, Taurus, all these different signs. You, you start seeing these same stories. And a lot of the times they're different in everybody's life. But a lot of the times there's there's the same thing going on. And I, if you've ever had a false awakening, this is something really cool, too, that I've, I've realized. If you've ever had a false awakening in a dream, which means that you think that you're awake, but you're not. Right. Yeah. And you keep waking up and you're still asleep and it's trippy. And after a while you start to think, man, I'm stuck, you know? Okay. <laughs> Do you know what, bro, I've got one of them crazy stories for you if, that, if you want to. How, to yeah. I, will, I want you to tell that story too. Um, but how many times do we do that in our life? Why do I keep in this situation? Why do I keep ended up in this situation? Why are things not changing? Yeah. I really want to move out of this cycle, but it's not changing. That's a false awakening. There's something you're not learning there. Yeah. Or you're either too afraid to get out of that paradigm. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And that's what Groundhog Day is all about, man. That's coming up shortly, yeah. too, Groundhog Day. 
You got a story about a false awakening? We got like a few minutes here. I'd love to hear it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's really quick, man. Uh, in my misspent youth, being stupid as a seventeen-year-old, I got a bit of reputation for having uh, being able to take a lot of smoke for smoking the old cannabis. And all I used to do is just breathe it, breathe it out slowly, so my mates thought I could set loads. But it was determined to try and get me really stoned. Yeah, they made three joints and gave me a blowback for the whole joint on all three joints. Right, it was trying everything to try and get me super stoned, compressing my chest and all sorts. And in the end. Because I'm really headstrong as well. So I was like, in the end, I was like, oh, Jamie, give me a beer hug and I'll take a big, massive Marley drag. All right. And of Whoa. course, you know what's going to happen? I passed out as soon as my feet hit the ground. I took it right to the limit. But what happened was the most incredible thing, one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Because I went to sleep for about three seconds and they woke me up. But in that three seconds, I woke up as somebody else, right? And I was that person. I lived in Boston or something like years ago. You know, I remember they had cobblestones and they had like, crates with like rope that pulls them onto the ship and i worked at some paper mill or something and i went to bed that night and woke up with somebody else and that kept happening every night i went to sleep but but each day last yeah each day lasted half the amount of time so by the time you've got to about six or seven i was like i'm giving up on my identity i don't know who i am and then it kept happening (laughs) and and i got about i got hundreds and hundreds of course they're all taking half the amount of time so after about 20 or 30 it's just a blur but I got, I felt the distance of about a thousand lives. And then Dude, I woke up crazy. and my mates woke me up and I jumped up like I was on drugs or something. I was like, guys, guys, guess what just happened? And they thought I'd gone nuts. Do you know what I mean? But it happened. That's, and now I'm like, what do you do with that? <laughs> That's one of my favorite reincarnation theories is that like, you know, that feeling that you get when you wake up and there's almost like a little um, split second feeling where you don't know where you are and all your memories kind of mm-hmm. rush back to you. Like, like you're, like you're rebuffering, like you're redownloading every day. So the idea is <laughs> yeah. how do you know that that's not happening every day? And that the, the day before you woke up as somebody else and the day before you woke up as somebody else and that download of all your memories just makes you believe that your life is happening in this linear fashion. But that experience you had could be what, what's going on for all we know, if this is kind of some, crazy uh that's interesting matrix that could be a thing. glimpse yeah that could be a glimpse and really i'm having a 40 year long day man exactly. that's a trip yeah. to think about right like a, a 40 year long but seriously a false awakening i think a lot of this stuff happens in our dreams that happens in our life i think i i think there are whether it's the animals that you run into the street signs that you see the characters and you know, friends and family in your life the jobs that you work the emotional experiences you ha- you have <clears throat> i think that th- these are all archetypal symbols uh, that are trying to speak to you honestly like joseph campbell type stuff that i really believe that we live in a universe that is like the mind of kind of like god if that's what god is it's a big mind full of all these different places and planets and everything and it's just living out all these dreams and all these different planets and all these different places. And that's exactly what we're doing. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Um, I want to bring our guest on too here in just a second. Um, and uh, she's got, she was on the Russell brand podcast. Um, and it was really cool to listen to her speak too. So we're going to bring on Teresa here in just a moment. We're going to take a break. I'm Joe Roop. This is lighting the void. Stay with us. More of this talk coming up, man. We're going deep into the void tonight. FM listeners, did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701-719-3971. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701-719-3971. 
That's 701-719-3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, anywhere. AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. Are you stressed? I mean, who is it? Anxiety creeping in? No, not that. Is sleep hard to attain because your brain just won't slow down? We're living in crazy times, and the fear knob has been turned up. Okay, there's an answer. Take a big breath, exhale, and go log on to AncientLifeOil.com. CBD, broad and full spectrum, organic and non-GMO CBD for you to enjoy. Change your tune from fear to calm, from brain overload to clear thinking. 0.003 THC on full spectrum and 0% THC on broad spectrum. Competitive pricing with the best quality. Also know everything is going to get better. No worries. Be happy. CBD can help calm so your nerves don't think they're a six-string electric guitar. Enjoy life, smile, and log on to AncientLifeOil.com for great CBD. That's AncientLifeOil.com. You'll be glad you did. Want to know what's on the Fringe FM? Check out our schedule at TheFringe.FM. Hola, Fringe listeners. This is Dave Cruz of Beyond the Strange, and you're listening to The Fringe FM. This is Malorca's 45, fan of The Fridge FM, challenging everyone to open their mind's eye. Listen to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop to gain precision for your third eye vision. My name is Jake. I'm from Billings, Montana, and I am a Void Walker. Hey, Joe Roop. Thanks for lighting the void. This is Janine in the bluegrass of Kentucky, and I am a Void Walker. What's up, guys? This is Damien from San Marcos, Texas, and I'm a Void Walker. I listen to the show to keep myself aligned with the world. Hi, this is Laura, a.k.a. Laura Lavender. I'm from Las Vegas, and I listen to Lighting the Void because it helps me understand some of the strangest experiences I've had. So thanks for all that you do and for always being there for us, Joe. and you're listening to Lying the Void with Joe Roop. Hey, this is country music singer and void walker Jason Benoit. And when I need my fix on the world of magic and the capabilities of the human consciousness, I listen to Joe Roop right here on Lighting the Void Radio. out of the alchemical tradition of Paracelsus is a medical tradition called Spigeria. Though not many people practice this work today, Phoenix Aurelius has been researching and teaching this work for the last 15 years, and he needs your support. Hi, I'm Phoenix Aurelius, and I'm the founder of the Phoenix Aurelius Research Society, where I perform modern scientific research on the methods and techniques of Paracelsian alchemy and Spigeria for health, wellness, agriculture, ecology, and more. All my work is 100% funded by the public. So if you like what I'm doing and you want to support my research, please consider making a purchase of Spigeric medicines from my apothecary, fund your own Spigeric IDF wellness research, or participate in my group study or one-on-one immersion courses so that you can learn how to perform this work for yourself. I want to thank you in advance for your support. Visit thefringe.fm forward slash alchemy research and enter coupon code FRINGE and receive 15% off anything and everything on the website. That's thefringe.fm forward slash alchemy research. And thank you for doing your part and keeping alchemy alive in the modern day. Thanks for joining us live here on Lighting the Void. Again, tonight we're talking about life, dreams, spirituality, symbolism, how it all corresponds. And if we're in a dream as we are awake right now, is that what essentially spirituality is? There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of clues that that might be what's really going on. I know we discussed that on the show before when we talked about the Red Book with Carl Jung and. Uh, uh, Night Stalker and Rohan are my co-hosts tonight, but we're we're here with our guest Teresa 
uh, Chung is here with us, and she's been researching and writing about spirituality, dreams, and the paranormal for the past 25 years. Born into a family of psychics and astrologers, she gave her first public psychic reading at the age of 14, and in addition to being a tarot reader, she lectured and organized workshops on numerology, tarot, and dreams, as well as published several international best-selling books. And I, like I said, she had a really good interview on Russell Brand, too. I watched that before the show tonight. But Teresa is also the host of White's uh, Shores podcast, a show for spiritual beings having a human experience, including conversations about dreams, spirituality, and the afterlife. And her podcast also features interviews with the entire ION science team regarding their pioneering research in bridging science and spirit. And you can visit her website at TeresaChung.com, and that's spelled C-H- E U N G. Thanks, Teresa, for coming on the broadcast. It's good to have you. Oh, it's good to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, I have had and at your website, and right away I went to uh, the premonition code because I've been having <laughs> premonitions forever. I, I realized that a dream journal was important and would would have weird dreams of like seeing numbers and stuff, and then. You know, later on, my one of my friends would find out, oh, somebody's going through my bank accounts and just weird, wild things, right? I'm, I'm trying yep. to figure out, um, first and foremost, what your thoughts on premonitions are. If this is something that uh, is, is just our higher self speaking to us, or is it something entirely different, do you think? Well, that's what the whole book, The Premonition Co., attempted to discover. I had the privilege of collaborating with Dr. Julia Mossbridge there, who's the time lady. Um, I think she was recently on um, The Unexplained with William Shatner, and she's done all sorts of research into precognition, the possibility of. She teamed up with D Dr. Dean Radin to do a study about actually sensing the future when you're awake called presentiment. And those studies are very, very promising um, where they wire people up, you know, to test their, their, you know, their heart rate and sweating, whether they can actually predict what a future image is going to be. Um, and she believes that it's possible to sense the future when you're awake through bodily sing signals. So the thinking is, if you can do that when you're awake, you can also do that when you're asleep. And that's where the premonition code came in, because I've written so many best-selling dream interpretation books. Um, and in those books, I talk about glimpsing the future in your dreams, because obviously in dreams, you transcend time and space. Um, there's that part of you that, that can transcend time and space. So it makes sense that precognitions could be real and we explored this in the book in a very unusual way it was very unusual to get a, a spiritualist as I am um, collaborating with a neuroscientist and looking into the science of time whether this is possible and uh, we created a kind well uh, Julia did it's a, a kind of scientifically endorsed um, way to test whether you can glimpse the future um, in when you're awake. Um, that, and we have that on the Premonition Code website um, if people want to check that out. But to go back to your question, yes, I do believe it's possible. I believe it because over the years I've had countless messages from people about dreams that have played out in their their daily life. Um, and there are ways of telling the difference between a symbolic dream and a precognitive dream, if you'd like to talk about that. But yes, the science is out there, uh, the possibilities out there. And um, it's endlessly exciting to be in the privileged position to research this and to talk to people having precognitive experiences. Well, th this kind of goes back to the question I asked at the beginning of the broadcast. It's almost as if sometimes dreams have a consciousness of their own. And you're mm -hmm. saying that, you know, there's a difference between precognition and symbolic dreams. If that's the case, then it feels, then something's talking to us, right? If it's doing different things for us. Yeah, it's, um, when, where do you go when you dream? I mean, that wonderful quote um, Le Sao, I believe, you know, am I a man dreaming I'm a butterfly or a butterfly dreaming I'm a man? You know, when you go into that dream world, where are you? What is it? It's it's beyond exciting. And especially now with the world gripped with 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 the pandemic, um, there's the lockdown dream phenomenon, which is uh, at the moment I'm getting a lot of media asking me about that. Why are people dreaming so vividly and frequently now? Um, you know, it's it's especially during times of stress and, and chaos. Um, 
vivid dreams, precognitive dreams seem to be coming to the fore. Yeah. I think that's really fascinating. It's like the dreaming mind is trying to help us because um, people are often frightened of their dreams because they don't make sense or they think they don't make sense. I've made it my life work to prove that they make perfect sense, actually, if you understand how to work with them. But when things don't make sense, people get frightened or dismiss them as random and meaningless, and they are anything but. There's a world we go to there full of infinite possibility that can offer us the potential for healing and hope. Um, and I'm trying to get that message across at the moment for people to understand that their dreams are their higher self, their spiritual self, trying to talk to them, help them understand and deal with the crisis at the moment that's gripping the world. It's called the lockdown dream phenomenon. And there's a lot of research about it at the moment. I, I have I keep having dreams myself uh, about about uh, like you can tell it's totally about the fear of abandonment right but the symbols yeah. the symbols are kind of crazy you know sometimes it's a classroom sometimes i'm in a i'm in a gunfight I, I knew i had a dream a long time ago i talked to another dream guy on the show a while back that i used to get into this these dreams where i would get into a war like these people were attacking my house or something like it was an army and I would take them yeah. all out, but I would get to the last guy and just get in a scuffle with them and run out of bullets or something, and it would kill me. You know, it's crazy. I mean, they're not crazy. It's just your dreaming mind offering you catharsis and using symbols to talk to you because everything in your dream, you're dreaming aspects of yourself, and it's actually your dreaming mind trying to help you role play deal with issues in your waking life um, and to bring you, you know, healing. That's what it, that's what the whole point of our dreams are. And that's why nightmares, people are terrified of nightmares. I think something, you know, dangerous and scary. It's not, it's the dreaming mind trying to help you. As I always say, dreams are a bit like an internal therapist and much cheaper than going to visit a real therapist. Because when you go to therapy or counseling, the aim is to understand yourselves better. But dreams are doing that for you every night. If we could just try and look at each symbol in the dream and say, what's my personal association? What is this trying to tell me, teach me? Um, it's like that movie Inception, that moment in the dream, in that movie where everything in the dream stops and stares at the dreamer. Yeah. That's what it is. Oh, you yeah. know, you are the center of it. But you're talking also, it sounds like you're precognitive ability as well that in very it's very it's rare most dreams are actually like a music video full of random images and symbols for you to enjoy deciphering the next day but there is that rare um type of dream and i call them night visions actually which have a very realistic feel and you can tell when they're precognitive potentially psychic because they have a beginning a middle and an end they're very coherent storyline and when you wake up it felt so real and vivid. You know it was more than a dream. Those are fascinating, and they do suggest that there's a part of us that is infinite, that knows our past, present, and future, the bigger picture of our lives, and is almost dipping into a potential future to show us that if we continue the way that we're going, this, this could play out. Um, those dreams are fascinating. And as I said, I have some amazing stories of people who have dreamt scenarios and they have played out precisely. Um, but I don't want people to get scared about this because people write to me then and said, oh, I had a dream I had a car crash or a loved yeah. one died. Um, what That's likely going to be a symbolic scenario because death in dreams always means change. And especially that if you're murdered in a dream, it means that change is being forced upon you. You don't want it. Um, if it's truly precognitive, it'll be much more, uh, as I said, beginning, middle and end. Very realistic feel. But the only way to know if a dream is going to be truly precognitive is to keep a record of them. Most people don't keep a record. You've got to keep the date and the time. And it will usually, from the research I've done, play out in two to three days time. Anything longer than that, we bring our associations and false memories into it and uh, wishful thinking. Um, so keep a record. I mean, if, if you're having dreams that you believe are, are coming true, playing out, the best thing to do is to keep a record to check that it really is precognition and not just going back to a dream and, 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 and making it more than it was.
Yeah, when I was studying magic, that was the one thing that they that we were required to do was keep a dream journal. You know, yes. um, keep a tab the to the lunar point, phase. Sorry. Yeah. It's the entry point to spiritual awakening. You're um, talking about awakening, uh, awakening earlier. Uh, it's, it's. I believe that dreams are the first, the portal, and they show us that there's more to us than the material, because science doesn't actually know why we dream. There are lots of theories, but science doesn't know why we dream. Science doesn't actually even know what time is or why we sleep. <laughs> All yeah. these questions, they have theories. They We don't know why we sleep. Well, it's all not, that science seems to know resting. is that the body yeah. releases a chemical of some kind, right, to shut the body yeah. off from moving because we, our brain understands it as really happening, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It, it Yeah. It, but we go somewhere, and what I encourage people to do is to become lucid in their dreams, to know they're dreaming when they're dreaming, because that's a very, very powerful step for psychic spiritual growth. Because if you become aware that you're dreaming and you can control the dream scenario, infinite possibility becomes yours. You can talk to departed loved ones. You can role play. You can be and do anything you want. And you can therefore do things in your dreams safely, experiment, learn about yourself, the, everything. And I've noticed that when people are able to do that in their dream state, the knock-on effects in their waking life are tremendous. The confidence boost it gives, the wisdom, and the understanding that we are infinite potential and there's so much more about us that's amazing and miraculous it, it, it transfers into into your waking life um so i i think that you know like lots of ancient tribes or um shamanistic cultures like the sonoy tribe that put lucid dreaming center stage in their their life there's very little incidence or no incidence of crime or depression in these cultures that do that that encourage children to become lucid in their dreamings. I mean, wow. in those cultures, children as young as four will talk to the elders of the tribe. In the morning, they gather around, what was your dream? And they encourage their children to talk about their dreams as if they're real. And if there was a fear in their dream or they were threatened by a wild animal, they are encouraged to return to that dream, to incubate that dream, to return to it and overcome the tiger in that dream. The thinking is that if in real life they are threatened, by a tiger they would have been there before they would have role played that scenario and know what to do it's fascinating yeah it utterly utterly absorbing but the and, symbols uh, but, but do you think the symbols in our life though Teresa, like as, as i study the the occult the esoteric the paranormal i start to think that the symbols in my life are kind of like what carl jung talks about is like I know things happen on a, a much slower vibration here uh, than it does in a dream world, surely. And there's laws to this place, but it still seems like that there is something like that that speaks to us in our waking life. Like, say, for example, if we were to become more conscious in our waking life, would that help mm -hmm. our dream life or vice versa, as if it plays off each other in a kind of an infinity way? Oh, the two are linked. Yes. You know, and little techniques like you know finding your hands in your dream you know uh, do that in your waking life become more aware of your hands look at your hands study your hands when you when you're using them becoming more mindful of them the more you become mindful in your waking life the more likely you are to also in your dreams and start thinking in your dreams where are my hands look at your hands and then when you look at your hands they're likely to grow fur or grow long or grow short then you know you're dreaming Right. And that's when you can become lucid in that dream. Um, <laughs> yes, you're right. The two completely linked. So becoming more conscious, more mindful in your waking life, that will then, because your your dreams mirror your waking life, they're an extension of it. Right. They're not, you know, they are, they are totally linked. And that's why, you know, dream interpretation, um, you have to look at your personal symbols and your personal associations. So what, when you dream of, for example, a, a dog, if you love dogs, it's going to be 
a lovely symbol of loyalty and companionship. But if someone has had a bad experience or is frightened of dogs, it will be a very different symbol. You've got to learn your personal symbols. Um, and I write a lot of uh, dream interpretation books where I talk about, you know, universal symbols. Mm. I mean, they tend to be common themes for symbols for people, but you've always got to put in your, your personal association because the dream state is emotion as well. Looking at the emotional content of the dream is extremely important for understanding the interpretation. Yeah, that is the one thing that I think that really corresponds to dreams is your emotions, like the deepest parts of your unconscious and the things that you really have to work out. Definitely. Mm, yeah, your dreaming mind dream. won't let you get away with anything. The dreaming mind is so honest. It exposes everything and it's it's wants you to face your fears. That's why so many people dream of being chased because they're running away for something that they don't want to deal with in their waking life. But your dreaming mind is saying, no, you need to learn and understand yourself better because your dreaming mind is trying to help you understand who you are, but also offer glimpses of your remarkable potential, your potential to be so much more than you limit yourself in your waking life. Um, you know, your dreaming mind won't let you get away with anything, but that's good. I, I hope everyone listening, if they do have dreams that scare or alarm them, to stop to stop thinking that dreams are there to, to get them or hurt them or injure them. You know, people have nightmares, wake up in terrors. Your dreaming mind is trying to help you. It's trying to show you an area of your life that you need to look at to evolve, because that's why we're here to endlessly evolve. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I, I got a friend that kept having dreams that it, they constantly felt like something was there to jump scare them, whether it was someone to grab them on the shoulder or someone would just pop out of a, a window or a door, just frightening type, you know, instantly shocking dreams, right? Where you get that eerie feeling that someone's behind you or something bad's about to happen. And they kept having them over and over and over again until finally they started realizing that this is something they got to deal with and once one they had and i've never understood this too they had this weird looking zombie thing just kind of pop into a doorway to scare them again in their dream jump scare them but this time they said okay why are you here instead of being afraid of yes. it they became lucid and said what do you brilliant. want and brilliant talk to the characters in your dream and also you can enter the next date that people underestimate the power of daydreaming if you have had a dream like that it, i would encourage this person the following day when they're in a calm setting and to be alone to close their eyes vividly recall that dream in the in a daydream and go back in the daydream and talk to this zombie or find out face it what is it what does it symbolize ask questions of the symbols in your dream and then the wonderful thing is about this, a dream as well, and a daydream, once you've experienced it, it becomes a memory. It's in the past. It's something you've dealt with. You're evolving. It, you know, when something has happened, it becomes a memory. You've overcome it. You're okay. You're still here. <laughs> yeah. I try and say to people, this is, this is really positive. Like a zombie dreams are typical. Something, some aspect of their waking life has died and is still functioning on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Are they going to inject life back into that aspect of their life or are they going to move on from it? It's something that's no longer living that is still haunting them. And it's finding out what that fear, that issue, that situation, that relationship, whatever it is symbolizing. It's up to them to start working out what that is and to stop putting their head in the sand and pretending it's not a problem. It is. Yeah. And then well, what that makes total sense. I know this once person. They face that, yeah. yeah, once they face that, they'll get a different dream because you have recurring dreams because the dreaming mind loves people to pay attention to it. Like anything in life, the more attention you pay to it, the more it flourishes. So if you're constantly getting a dream symbol like a zombie chasing you and you're not interpreting it, understanding it, that image will get more and more frightening until you do it. And then once you do understand, well, yeah, maybe there's an, an issue from my childhood I haven't dealt with or this relationship isn't serving my higher interest anymore. When you deal with that consciously in your waking life, that dream will stop. That reoccurring dream will stop and you'll start getting a, another kind of dream because there are endless things for us to work on and learn about ourselves. But your dreaming mind will get very repetitive and dull if you're not in your waking life evolving 
as I said, you know, if you want to have sweet dreams, magical dreams, fascinating dreams or creative dreams that can inspire you to to do new business ideas or write novels or do great works of art, Salvador Dali, for example, most of his artwork is inspired by visions and dreams. If you want to have those kind of constantly creative, wonderful dreams, your waking life has got to evolve too. And you've got to have just as much of a conscious awareness in your waking life of your infinite potential as in your dreams. <laughs> yeah, that see, and that was exactly the question that I asked too before, uh, the, before we brought you on. I think that you're exactly spot on with that. So spot on too. Um, we we're at the top of the hour here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a top of the hour break here on the, on the network. But when we come back, we're going to ask Teresa some questions. I'll get Rohan to ask her a question. Also, uh, a Night Stalker can ask her a question. And if you want to call into the show, you can too to ask at 1-800-588-0335. Make sure you keep that phone number handy. We'll be right back. More Lighting the Void coming up. Stay with us. Northern California Piscean stuck in the Arizona desert. I'm a void walker and I got the shoes to prove it. So what do I do when my soul yearns to delve deep into the realm of the unknown? I aim my satellite straight into the night sky and catch a smooth ride on the KTLK DB radio waves. I tune into Lighting the Void with Joe Root on the French FM. Joe, Lighting the Void is the best show on the planet. This is Barney your friend from Facebook. Thank you and all the crew for all you do. Namaste, my friend. This is Macon from the Foothills, North Carolina, and I am a board walker. G'day, board walkers. This is Lily from Down Under Australia. The world may be small, but the enigma is great. So let your curiosity take you for a journey with Joe Root. Hey, this is V, coming in from Central Maryland, and I am a void walker. This is Kevin Darkerty, a beginner Void Walker. I'm from Vancouver, BC. I know a little about a lot. You know, as Leonard Skinner said, I guess the rest. I learned a lot from uh, Mr. Root and the show. And I uh, heard it from the beginning. I knew right then he was going to be a New York Bell. Thanks for all your uh, shows and keep it up. Hey, this is Derek from Mass, aka the Night Stalker, and I'm a Void Walker. This is Mark from Chicago, and I walk the void to ascertain. What is consciousness? My name is Jared Johnson, and I'm from Humboldt County, California. I do not know all the answers to the questions about reality. I do not claim to know the ultimate truth about life. I seek that which has been made hidden as a part of a family of explorers of consciousness. I'm a void walker. Thanks, Jaru. This is Barbara Charlton from Metaphorical Archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Uh, who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty. You don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does it neutralizes those emotions the circuit that that was recorded on is gone the energy flows freely and you're free of it and that's what emotional freedom is all about we offer this as a pro bono service but this is something that i offer because no one it seems is helping people with these experiences if you'd like to reach me it's really easy my cell phone is 214-995-3754 please leave a message i will get back to you as quickly as possible or you 
you can email me, barb.eft at gmail.com. And EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. Reach out to me. It's confidential. This works. You won't believe the results. Have you heard of heavy metals? Yeah! I'm not talking about the heavy metals in the junkyard. I'm talking about the heavy metals that build up in your body. Heavy metals in your body can make you feel sluggish, fatigued, and just plain off. Why not try Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com? Cleansing your body and making you feel great. (sighs) Cleansing the inside of your body of intruders that sneak their way into you and set up an intruder camp. Life Change Tea helps remove unwanted intruder camps. Brew it. Steep it and drink in the results. Tastes great so you can create a new health habit. Our tea loves to help people. It just needs the chance. So order yours today by logging on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Our Life Change Super Strength Tea is waiting. This could be a beautiful relationship. Take charge of your health. Order at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. From the Kingdom of Arkansas, you are listening to Joe Root. And lighting the void here on the Fringe FM. Hey, this is Amalia from Know the Self Mystery School. I know that you are in the midst of massive change. We all are. This is the great turning, the time that we all decided to be here on the planet. Do you know why you came here to be a part of this crazy time? If not, I invite you to join my mystery school. I have a nine-week course called Activate Your Mission. And in this course, you're going to learn how to erect crystal clear boundaries so that you can hear that inner still voice that's going to guide your every move. Even if you're dealing with feeling weighed down by obligation and being enslaved to the system, this course is going to give you the tools you need to illuminate your shadow and awaken to your soul's mission. The moment you sign up to the school, you are going to be greeted by not only a group of soulful spiritual lawyers, but you're also going to get some massive karmic clearings and you're going to feel the energy It's palpable. I hope you'll join me in the school where together we're going to unlock your divine mission. Activate your mission by going to thefringe.fm forward slash soul mission and put in the code word fringe and receive $50 off today. Back to Lighting the Void. Again, the call in number to the show is 1 800 588 0335. Here's my co host tonight, Rohan, and the Night Stalker. And our guest with us tonight is Teresa Chung. And if you go to her website, uh, there are a ton of good books there. And that's spelled T H E R E S A C H E U N G, TeresaChung.com. And you can go to uh, her book section, which is very impressive, I have to say. Um, you can just tell the energy of this the, of this stuff too. I know it sounds kind of wooish, but when you look at the the book titles and then after speaking to you, Teresa, like I know probably pretty much anything you got on there is going to be a good read for sure. So oh, thank you. It's it's as I said, I I'm trying to mainstream talk of the paranormal with my books. Um, as I said, I work for for a lot of mainstream publishers and. I think I was mentioning to you that with the paranormal and psychic and development, you have to be kind of quite careful how you 
promote it. But what's been exciting this last few years, actually, is much more open minded approach to it. Um, and I think my work with scientists has really helped that because scientists and neuroscientists now are beginning to really be open minded about the possibility of the unseen in our lives. That's good. To investigate the inner world. And that is a huge the exciting development because science before it was just what was external what could be seen you know but there are a whole new um breed of scientists emerging now who are taking into account what is unseen what is invisible what can't be explained in our lives and they're studying it what is consciousness i find these scientists so very very exciting to work with yeah, I I do too. I've talked. I've had Dean Raiden on the show and a couple other yep, people that. Dean, yeah, he wrote the forward for the premonition code for me. Yes, he, he, I've interviewed him too. He's fascinating, isn't he? Yeah, Very quietly he, spoken. Yeah, gentleman. great guy. Yeah. Great guy too. Um, so what I want to do is I want to give my co-hosts a chance here to ask you questions because I know they're chomping at the bit for sure. I'll start with uh, Rohan if you're there, Thank brother. You. Uh, do you, you got a question for Teresa? Oh, yeah, I can hear me. Yeah, got it. Um, yeah, I've got a, I've got a quick comment. I just want to um, sort of back you up, if that's okay, Teresa. With um, this, I like what you're doing. I like the way you put this. We've got to get this thing across, but we've got to try and get through the professionalism. And I think you, you sound like you're really on top of that there. And I just wanted to back you up with that thing of um, uh, the world doesn't happen to us, does it? it? Happens for us and because of us, and so therefore, surely it stands to reason. That's the same with dreams. We're not victims of them happening for us and to us. I think that's such an important point. That you can't drill enough. Because it's such a victim mindset all the time going on in the world. So, absolutely, you have nailed it there. Um, Absolutely nailed it in what you said. So profound and waking people up to the fact, you know, they're in charge of their dreams, you know, um, and they can become lucid in them and take charge of them. Start there. That's a great place to start. And then in your waking life, it will have an amazing effect. I love what you said. Thank you. Yeah, I Thank agree with that. that. I agree so with that, man. As well, Joe. Yeah, I agree um, with that. I, we talk about that on the show all the time. Life is happening for you. It's a slower type dream for sure. But this stuff isn't happening to you. It's happening for you most of the time. Yes. You know? Every dream is a gift for you. And if you don't interpret it or work with it or mull over it or even recall it, as I say, everybody dreams. They just don't recalling it. You are, it's like getting, as the town would said, a, 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 a handwritten message and not a letter and not opening it. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's a letter from you to you, um, you know. And if you start, actually, what I find when I work with people with dreams, what's lovely is it their life becomes more exciting because the world's slowed down right now because of what's happening. And, you know, a lot of us are confined to our homes um, you know, we're not meeting people the, the you know, having, aren't having the experiences. However, if you start working with your dreams, you'll realize that you can learn so much there. It makes your life much more exciting to know that there's this part of you that when you fall asleep, that the adventure really begins, the learning really begins. And you wake up with a, a kind of a glint in your eye thinking that was exciting. Yeah. It yeah. gets you to fall in love with yourself, which a lot of us struggle with as well. You know, gosh, I'm interesting. <laughs> I've right. had these really interesting experiences, and and they are real, just a reality you're not quite comprehending yet. Don't right. dismiss them as random or meaningless, because that's kind of like being saying that you're random and meaningless. It's an aspect of your reality. Take it se- as seriously as you do your other areas of life. And um, Night Stalker, are you there? Do you have a question as well for Teresa? Uh, yeah, uh, Teresa, it's been really great. Uh, I just want to say that um, you framing uh, how the work we do during the day can help us have um, more lucid dreams and more uh, profound dreams is a nice motivation for people to do the work during the day. Uh, it's, uh, that was cool. My question is, um, it's a little more out there, but you mentioned uh, Inception earlier. So do you think there's a chance that people have shared dreams if we have a collective consciousness that, that there's... You do. Um, that's well, fascinating again, to me. Yeah. Thank you for the great point about, you know, your waking life, make, you know, becoming more conscious and mindful in your waking life and your, it, it, it will impact your dreams. But yes, people, I do get letters about people having shared dreams that they have um, woken up in the morning, shared a dream. It's typically with someone they're quite close to. 
um, and they say, oh, my goodness, I had that dream. Um, and you, you can actually incubate dreams where you meet people in dreams, very advanced technique. Um, I haven't yet achieved it myself. I would love to, but I certainly get a lot of correspondence about that happening. Sometimes it happens spontaneously too, where people have met each other in dreams and then they talk a few days later and it's like, my goodness, I had that dream too. (laughs) What's happening there? Oh my God. That happened to me with someone too. They were, the next day I, we always talked about our dreams right and the next day uh she was like well i was talking to my dad uh and you were um in the next room and i said well uh we were all on the i was we were all talking together but for some reason you were behind the wall and i said that's funny i just had a dream i was having a three-way call with you talking to you and your dad on the phone and he wasn't paying attention to you what you were saying and me either, but we were having a conversation. So we were all three talking to each other in a weird way, but the scenarios were different. But I think there was a connection there. Absolutely, showing how we're all in- interconnected in some way. Um, I find that fascinating. <laughs> As I said, you know, I, I get lots of people who do write to me with similar scenarios. Often it's like what you say that the dream isn't exactly the same, but the same characters featured in it um wow do you think uh, well do you think um that the dream that there's more to it than just the higher state of mind or the dreaming mind trying to teach us something because i you know brian space in the chat room put something up that reminded me of the movie the matrix when he speaks to the oracle right and she's like this you know the matrix is happening there's chaos outside but she's like this loving being that wants to give him a cookie you know and be so sweet to him and tell him like he's a child almost you know and it's it's like trying to teach him something then she's like you know uh don't worry about the vase and he said what vase and he turned around and hit it and he broke it and he said well how did you know that i was going to do that and she goes well what a really baker noodle is would you have broken it if i wouldn't have said anything you know so oh this is like when i was talking to dr mossbridge i hope you you get her on the show time lady about what is time you know f- sensing the future the past and the present are all happening at the same time these expansive theories uh, exciting possibilities uh yeah <laughs> yeah. But she, yeah some people call about the long body over time the part of us that know, n- knows mm. our past, present, and future, and it's all actually happening at mm. once. Yeah, doesn't oh, it seem like there's that. more going on there? Like that this this thing yeah. that's trying to teach us something is like this loving. Maybe it's us that's a more loving person of our smaller self, or something. You know, that's just trying is it to our fu- yeah. future self talking to us as well. You know, the future self. You know. Uh, I always encourage people also to make friends with their future self. I know that sounds weird, but, you know, to shake hands with your future self, that concept, you know, because in dreams you can meet your future self, a future that's a potential future that's happened. Um, yeah. As I said, you're, you know, if, if the mind can exi- exist separate from the body and brain, which near-death experience research is showing, could be possible which reincarnation research is showing po- could be possible which a lot of studies in um you know in presentiment are, are indicating at the moment um anything's possible <laughs> if our minds can exist separate from brain and body that allows you know as i said science is looking into that at the moment that's why all this consciousness research is so fascinating mm-hmm. because that's where it all seems to be heading and and near death experiences i suppose illustrate this more than ever yeah that the mind can survive body and brain death well then yeah, anything so it's freaky. all out there anything could be anything's possible for us then yeah. showing that you know our minds are just inhabiting our bodies we are spiritual beings having we had this a, human experience we had a doctor on dr james cobalba who come on and he had a, a book full of doctors that just yes. worked in the hospitals and everything that could speak to that or these incidences where people saw things that were happening during surgery that it was impossible for them to see or hear uh you know that died and came back so yeah there's 
there's definitely um, something to it. And I know you got to go uh, now because you're short of time here. But before you go, like I do, I would ask you, since you have spent this time with us to go, can you tell our audience where, you know, they can find your work, what your latest book is? Are you going to be speaking or doing any events or on any new radio shows coming up? Oh, thank you so much. That's very, very generous of, of you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, I've been writing so many books. <laughs> it's a Teresa Chung book for almost every aspect of New Age. I started writing encyclopedias of the psychic world with Harper Collins, and, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm very prolific author. You know, if you want to find me, it's www.teresachung.com. I do do a lot of media. As I said, I'm feel very blessed that when there are paranormal things going on or vivid dreams at the moment i'm in a lot of demand with the media want people having all these dreams because of the lockdowns um i i'm i'm doing a lot of media and talks yeah. um so you you can find it's all on my website or and i my my social media presence is 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 been growing steadily over the years i'm on facebook mainly um instagram as trees of chung also you can find me um very active community so I, I'm just my my mission is to try and mainstream this and to take away the fear and uh, you know thinking it's it's strange or odd. It's not for me. It's the most normal thing in the world to have a precognitive dream, to fly in your dreams, to feel that you're more than meets the eye. <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> yeah, more than meets the eye. Who said that? That's a cartoon, Night Stalker. I forget who Transformers. said Transformers. Transformers. That's right. <laughs> Transformers. I knew it. I was like, that's one of them. But you know, I knew that, and maybe we can have yes, you back what, on what I too. I want to say it's wonderful that movies showcase all these themes. You know, all these movies that we love from the Force in Star Wars to, as you were saying, these huge. They're, they're huge, not just because of the special effects and the actors. They're huge because of the underlying paranormal spiritual themes which we all crave mm. because it's in our dna this desire this spiritual this psychic ability it's in our dna but in that's why you know a massive movie franchise is often there's a paranormal spiritual theme in there and i think it's wonderful at the moment i think on netflix isn't it surviving death is, mm. is doing so well the disney movie soul Goodness. Yeah, that's Disney. And it's wonderful, actually, because I had Lauren Carpenter, who co-founded Pixar. He was one of my early guests on my podcast God, I love with the Iron Field. Scientists. I hope you get to speak to him because he co-founded Pixar. He's science director at Disney and he's now Ion's fellow. Um, he works a lot with my co-author for the Prem Code, Dr. Mossbridge. That's how I was able to, to get him on my show. But if Disney is doing it, that movie Soul has so many paranormal themes Well, it's a near-death experience movie basically isn't it yeah uh, i think these subject and now you we've been saying this on on this broadcast for a few years now this subject matter conscious exploration the human potential and this whole thing about waking up to our abilities is going to get more popular as it goes on and it definitely you've got has kids, being, kids i mean disney you know it's it's so mainstreaming it isn't it and getting a lot of there was a lot of controversy about that film saying children were too young to be introduced to all these things you know a near-death experience what what is pre-life what is post-life all that um but look how it's got rave reviews hugely popular and it reminds me like even the also you know brit brit jk rowling when she first wrote harry potter all the publishers turned it down um, saying, oh, children don't want to be interested to do, introduced to the death so young because the, the novels yeah. start, the books start with the death of the parents. Children mm. do instinctively want to learn about and know about this. And if you talk to children about soul, it's like, yeah, okay, they get it. It's sad that as we grow up, we bring in all our distrust and this is nonsense and can't mm. be happening. Do you Children think the archetypes in those stories, though, the, the, I don't know if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell, but the things that our spirit goes through archetypally, when they put them in those stories like Harry Potter, you know, where the, there's the philosopher's stone and the whole alchemist thing that's all through that, exactly. too. Exactly. You know? Yes. Children instinctively get it. You know, it, you know, it, it, what happens is that, you know, when you go to school or peers or grown-ups tell them it's all nonsense and get real, it's it's sad, but you know it's wonderful now. As I said, Soul that released it on Christmas Day, 
to yeah, huge acclaim and understanding. I mean, ten years ago, that a movie like that would never have met, passed the you know the, the the proposal stage. And look at what's happening now. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see where th this is going to go in the next few, in the next few years. People are tapping into their uh, psychic nature more, their intuition, which is something else that you wrote about as well. To you know, the intuition. Um, and the whole pandemic as well has made us like that because, you know, if you're wearing masks and everything, you've got to be more telepathic, telepathetic, telepathic, yeah, tele because telepathic. you have to sense what, people, sense what people are feeling when you can't actually be close to them. You know, yes. we, we're all having to do that now. You know, we're all if, if you in, in lockdown or whatever, you're having to be more contemplative. We're being forced collectively to awaken our spiritual senses, to connect with people again. Yeah, it is. It is sad to take the to take physical connection away is very sad, especially yeah. for children and stuff like that. But I believe just like in, in alchemy, when you take away contact, then there's a desire for contact, whether that be through relationships, family, hugs, whatever, friendships, however you want to look at that contact. And then that fire itself of desire, which this is kind of taught in alchemy, starts waking up things in your spirit the emotions yeah. and all of the things that you crave or don't have or want. And it just causes chaos inside you, which opens you up to all these things, you know, awaken our, our psychic mm -hmm. abilities, you know, and meet people in their dreams. You know, it, this, we, we're all being forced to do that in a way at the moment. And I think we'll never be the same again after this. You know, I think a lot of people will have awakened spiritually, mm -hmm. um, psychically during this time. Um, um, I think we're going to evolve. I think it is really exciting that mm -hmm. these these themes that you are talking about are becoming mainstream. Who would have thought that, right? I would have never yeah. thought that, but, you know, Disney five years movie. ago. Oh, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, I never would have thought that. What we talk about is well, going to become mainstream. Like, in, I remember when Inception came out, and I thought, oh, man, if I could do that, I don't know if I would ever come back to the real world. I'd no, probably stay there, enough. you know. It's too interesting. That movie is one of my. I always, I actually mention it in my a lot of my books. Yeah. <laughs> I say that's your dream homework because a lot of people when they watch that film they dream more after. I have no want idea because they find it exciting. I think that's what movies can do. They can take away. They can make it exciting, and like an adventure, um, and get people interested in 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 a way. And that's what you guys are doing. So thank you. You're making it interesting, and understandable for people it's not you know it's not as complicated as we all think it's actually the simplest thing in the world to to dream vividly to have psychic experiences and to know that this life is not all that there is yeah mm -hmm. wow very well said thank very you. well said and thank you and thank you for coming on the broadcast too it was really good to speak oh, to oh, you well thank you so much i'm sorry i have to shoot off no it's totally that fine it's good to talk to you thank you Maybe we'll do it again thank sometime. You. Speak to you. Take care, and thanks for all you do. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Right. Bye, -bye. Bye, bye bye. Wow. Yeah, really cool. Really cool for her great. to come on. Yeah, I mean, oh, she does like awesome. a ton of radio shows. I was like a super well-known author in this field. So, uh, I, Pacho's doing good things, brother. You're doing yeah, big things awesome. <laughs> because. I was thinking, like, Teresa Chung, I think I know that name. Every time I go to a metaphysical shop and look at books, I see her all over these books, right? And I'm like, surely that's not the same person. And I went and looked, and I was like, oh, hell, it is, you know? So it was cool to have her she, on here. She was good. She was really good. Like, we talk about dreams a lot, but she really uh, resonated. Like, it really resonated with what she was talking about. She was great. That was awesome. She knows, she knows the stuff like when I listen to that mirror. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, oh, she, you, know, you, you know, they've got a handle on it straight yeah. away. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I'm confident with this person, you know. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? I have never heard of, you know, I know at the, at the Monroe Institute that they're doing like really good things there with the, with the OBEs and stuff, but I had never, ever heard of dream incubation, like where people can meet each other in dreams. I always thought that was just the out of body experience thing. I mean, maybe I just missed it, but have you guys heard of dream no, I, incubation? Yeah, I, I think that's, I mean, if we share a collective consciousness, if, we, if you can feel when people are looking at you, then I don't see why we're not sharing some kind of dream realm. Like, so I think I, that, like, 
the outer body and the astral projection are just different rooms in the same mansion, as they say. It's just different different um, levels to like different party. Maybe a similar a similar phenomena. But like, I definitely believe that. I think she mentioned something at the beginning of the interview how like um, the Native Americans were they would have the children tell their dreams at the beginning of the day. And I think that the fact that like outside of the fringe, if you would try to tell your dream uh, to somebody like on the street, they'd be so bored. Like there's like a, a classic joke is there's nothing more boring than hearing another person's dream to people who aren't into dreams. So there's a chance that we're dreaming about each other and meeting each other every single night. But because as a culture, As a culture, what did I lose everybody? You there, Rohan? I'm I'm still here. Yeah, yeah I think we just lost uh, Night Stalker for a second there. Oh no, he, he's just about to hit the haymaker as well. Yeah, he was about <laughs> to like he's like as a culture, and he was a it's right at the climax. It man. was coming, it was coming, man. This was going to solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> he had the answer to all the all the questions of consciousness. Night Stalker you know, was about to deliver. You know? Do you know what I had? A, I had a, I can't remember who said this, but I heard somebody saying that her father on his deathbed had this dream where um, the, the angels gave him all the pills of wisdom of the universe, and he had them all. He had these like seven pills, and they all meant something, and he knew exactly what they meant. But then he woke up from his dream and he tried to tell his daughter, and he said, "I can't remember." <laughs> I can't oh remember. man, that's terrible, isn't it? That sucks. Yeah, but it made it made him laugh though, because he was like, "Oh well, when I do die, then it looks like I'll get a bit more time to think about this, and I'll remember <laughs> that sort of thing." Yeah. So, well, there he goes. You know, he finally fell uh, off the face of the earth. Yeah, the, his phone's gone. Yeah. Well, you know how it is up there in Mass. It's, they're getting whiteouts and stuff. We got so much snow today. I felt like I wanted to. I hate. I feel like I'm on the wall, man. I'm not playing. Like I'm in Game of Thrones, and I'm up on the wall. And with yeah, the crows, yeah, yeah. it's not cool. But I'll tell you what, bro. I've had, I'm in Nottingham in England. It's not known for being warm, but it's, it's the, you, we don't get extreme weather here. You just don't. It's wet, but you don't get extreme weather. We haven't got a long enough lamp. Do you know what I mean? We're not getting massive supercell storms. We don't get earthquakes, but I've had weather warnings every day this week on my phone. And I'm like, what's all these weather warnings? Extreme rain, flooding and stuff. Not where really? I am, but I'm just like, yeah. Uh, well, no, it's winter. It's England, but just thought, mm. Man, sure. we might have... earthquake. Last few years, earthquakes all over the world. It's gone up loads, hasn't it? And it's like, oh, stuff going on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's the quickening's about to happen for sure? Yeah, yeah. It's I got coming, it. Brother. It's coming, brother. All right, so uh, here, yeah. here's we're on the last break. Here, we will get into your phone calls. I, there was a phone caller waiting the whole time. I didn't even. I got so interested in what she was saying, I didn't pick up the phone. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. I shouldn't do that, but I'm sorry. That happened. It happens. All right, so. Yeah, forgive me just a little bit. We'll be right back. More than uh, more than just a few minutes. We'll be right back. Lighting more than I'm just. What am I trying to say, dude? I'm stumbling over my words. More lighting the void coming up. Rohan and Night Stalker here with us. Stay with us. Christ. you love talk radio then you'll love talkstreamlive.com talkstream live is always on 24 7 with the best streaming talk shows find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones it's free readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier just go to talkstreamlive.com be sure to download the free apps from google play or the itunes app store the truth is out there and so are we ktlk digital broadcasting the fringe fm want to support lighting the void just go to lightingthevoid.com sign up on our membership page and pick your package where you can get exclusive content readings and exclusive behind the scenes content also check out the ltv shop where you can get your very own altar box t-shirt shack hoodie with sigil roswell style t-shirt racerback tees socks long sleeve shirts stickers and beanies keep lighting the void airing five nights a week by going to lightingthevoid.com and support today 
Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. Telepath is a weekly digital newsletter filled with the latest paranormal news, trending topics, and fresh articles from some of the most popular critical thinkers in the community today. Stay informed on your favorite paranormal podcasts and live streaming talk shows. Interact with the telepath and upload your paranormal story or pics. It could be featured in an upcoming edition. Sign up right now for the free telepath newsletter at paranormal.radio. That's paranormal.radio. Lighting the Void and the Esoteric Scholar present the Altar Box, crafted and designed for magicians by magicians. Now you can take your practice with you. This beautifully handcrafted mobile altar opens and works as an altar for any of your spiritual, religious, or ritual practices. Made to travel and work in small spaces, the Altar Box comes with hidden compartments for your practice tools and accessories. The Altar Box also comes with a dark scrying mirror for scrying and reverses and fits perfectly also as a chalkboard for any sigil, symbol, or whatever you see fit to sketch. The Altar Box is handcrafted to carry as a small suitcase so you may take your practice with you and the hinges are made with solid material and hinged with leather and rivets for extra strength the mirror piece and floor plate fit perfectly when closed so no movement will happen use it in small places as well you can practice meditation magic planetary magic sigil magic scrying ritual never be without your practice tools again no matter the setting or where you go in this season give the gift of magic for yourself or your loved one by grabbing your altar box was two forty nine ninety nine now one ninety nine ninety nine. The sale ends January first, twenty twenty one. Just go to lightingthevoid.com forward slash altar box and get yours while the sale lasts. listen to the show but if you remember that music then you've been listening to lighting the void for quite some time that's some old school chronos right there welcome back to lighting the void i'm your host joe root call in numbers 1-800-588-0335 if you want to call into our show you can also join the discord chat and uh everybody has certain privileges in there too that the longer you stay the nicer you are the more privileges you get see it's a nice community of void walkers and fringers and <laughs> beyond the strangers and now rogians and all kinds of people man we got all that we got a bunch of new shows coming to the network Rogies. as well too check it out the ripple effect uh Gry america uh charlie robinson's coming so yeah cool people cool. coming to the network man lots of cool people oh, uh, for the fringe hello lineup yeah, dude, it's going to be okay. crazy, man. Uh, I think we're going to air like uh, Sam Tripoli, too, from Tinfoil Hat. You know, the, oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, he goes deep. Real deep. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to... The, the, the conspiracy is about to get heavy on the fringe, but we're going to oh, we're going to keep adding shows and more cool stuff to it, too, as well. So, 
I want to get a mystery uh, show on here, like one of those storytelling ones, you know, like they just tell, I don't care if it's fiction. I just like stories, man. Um, oh, like uh, Creepypasta? Yeah. Yeah, like something yeah. like that. That would oh, be cool, wouldn't it? the Russian sleep experiments and stuff. That, that was freaky, that was. You ever heard of that one? The Russian sleep experiment, Creepypasta. That was yeah. crazy. No. Do you think, do you think, you know, earlier we were talking about the uh, the Oracle, right, in the Matrix, which the Matrix is all about what mm. we we are talking about. You know how Neo needs to wake up from the dream, the dream world, to go into the reality world, and the reality world is him waking up to his own power in the dream world, which is essentially a show talking to us about our own power, right? But when he goes to the Oracle, <laughs> damn it, Night Stalker, when he goes to the Oracle, um the oracle is like the, the this representation of like the divine feminine i don't know if uh, yeah, yeah. just this loving energy that kind of knows how everything works but yep. isn't going to tell you who you are until you believe it right yeah uh, she, she's like for me she's like the sort of christ consciousness energy because she's not going to she needs you to discover it and she's going to give you all these clues to discover it but you've got to find it it's almost like it's not a value if she tells you you know what i'm saying yeah because he's like am you're gonna tell me what and she, you know when she's like and then i'm gonna tell you and he goes i'm not the one and she's like sorry kid but he is but it's because mm -hmm. he doesn't believe it that he's not yeah right and if she'd have told him that it'd have been freaking trying to and you know what i mean can't handle it exactly the same thing as i said to you when i had that, that um this creepy experience because it takes that much. In fact, I don't think I've told you actually, but it takes that much for it to sometimes you need to hear something else other than what the truth is, don't you? Because it's too much to handle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. That's weird. I might have to reset the phones. Me? Yeah, I can hear you. I might have to reset the phones, uh, James, because I don't see you in here for some reason. Let me reset them and then you could uh, call back. I don't, for some reason, I don't see you. Um, but yeah, like he, he does that the whole thing through the matrix, like doesn't believe that he's the one it's this big doubt, which is the same thing that we do. We doubt our own abilities all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and I try to tell everybody that, like, that you're a magician. Could, yes. You can create anything yes. you want in your life, anything you want, yeah. but until you actually know it, you're not going to be able to, because that doubt is a barrier. It's just like fear. It's the same thing. It's a barrier. But we don't. But he, we don't have a loving mother it. energy to show us that, like the oracle, though. You know, a lot of us don't. Um. So I just think it's. I, I don't know. I think the symbolism in that is fascinating because she has all these children, and it's like the motherly type, like you're talking about, Rohan, like the divine kind of spirit or feminine that's taking care of all these gifted children and and making sure that they believe in themselves, but not really telling them the mystery. You know, pretty cool. Like that's, that's, that's a something. role in the no, code too. Like the, <laughs> I love that. Go ahead, Rowan. Oh no! So I just thought can, can I, I just I, yeah, I thought Nightstock nice was about to say something. I thought yeah. he was about to say something about does it take that? Does it take that doubt to get there? Yeah, that's what he was going to say. Yeah, what were you going to say, Nightstock? Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know if you guys. I was going to say that he's in the void. Uh, Dude, he's in the matrix, bro. Han, you hear him? That was it. I heard it go down his throat just then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he's not stalker's Wi-Fi, I think brother. I think, I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. It's a sketchy connection. Just, just a few little data packets here and there. You know? No, we're in a dream now. Like Jewish producers saying, so that makes a lot of sense. It did sound like he just had a digital toss back, didn't it? Yeah, wow. yeah, glitches, man. I'm telling you. But we've all been, I was going to say this to, to the guest, Teresa. We've all been talking about what she's been saying in the Discord chatters and on Fringe of Family. It's probably why we found each other because there's so many people saying, we need to talk about this weird stuff. It's that time, man. It needs to start just saying it, you know? It needs to become more mainstream. And I know she's talking about ions and that there are a lot of neuroscientists that are getting involved with it. And that's great. And I think, I think she's right about that, but it, it needs to become more mainstream. Like w the government actually get behind it. You know? Yeah. The thing is, the thing is, it's like, 
and I know it's like the same thing again, the conjunction, there's early exchange, the Pisces energy is gone. The fact of the matter is exactly like what Richard Dolden wrote that book um, the day after Roswell, uh, sorry, the day after Diclo- AD disclosure, the day after disclosure. And he'd say, look, this is inevitable. It has to happen. It's like these old institutions that are crumbling. It's because they're old fashioned. They're not made right. And you can't keep this going on forever. You can't keep it. The, the truth embargo, Stephen Bassett, you can't keep it going on forever. It's inevitable. And Richard Dolan used to say, look, we need these technologies and it's the only thing that's going to push us forward. So they have to come out. No matter how much people want to hold on to the secrets, they have to come because they need it. We need it. We need it. You know? So yeah, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. And also, I always think as well, the universe has been around a long time. And if there weren't fail safes in place, it would have failed. So the fact that we're here shows you that there's fail safes in place, at least in my mind. You know? Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, the night stalker said to go on without him, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Um, oh, what a trooper! Yeah. <laughs> <Back for you. laughs> we lost him in the void. We can go to the phones; they're working now. Let's see. We'll do this in order. Seven one three area code. You're on the air. Who are we speaking with? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Who are we can speaking you hear with? Me, sir? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi, I'm Russell. I'm Russell. Where are you calling from, Russell? I'm actually on the road from, I'm actually on the road uh, in New Mexico, actually. <laughs> I'm a truck driver. <laughs> Fantastic. Truck drivers listen to this show now. That's like Art Bell used to be. That's cool. Um, oh, heck yeah. Yeah, after I listen to you, I used to listen to you and uh, uh, listen to Clyde, you, and then I listen to, uh, what's this, on after you. Ryan Gable, uh, yeah. Oh, Ryan Gable. Uh, heck yeah. Yeah, you guys are my, uh, you guys are my permanence, man. I love it. But uh, what I want to talk to you about is you're talking about the dreams and stuff. Uh, I have a, I have twin daughters, and they're uh, 28 years old now. But when they were five years old, uh, you know, I, I could hear I could hear them in there, you know, and they were asleep. I could, I could hear rustling. And I went in there, and I woke up one of my daughters, and she described her dream. You know, she said, Dad, I'm having a dream, you know, and this and this and this, you know. And then the other one woke up, my other twin woke up and finished the dream off. What? That's yeah. pretty crazy, finished isn't it? the dream. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, man, my, my, I'm right now, my hair on my arms are standing up. I was like, I mean, uh, you know, and, and to this day, they still share their dreams. Even though they're fraternal twins, I mean... You know, they're still, they're very close. You know, they're not identical. They're fraternal. They even have different blood types. But hey, they wow. still have, they still share their dreams. It's it's it's, it's freaking crazy, man. How, how old was, yeah. the, how did you say they were the first time you realized that was happening? They, that was five, they were five years old. That's wild. Five years old. Yeah, man. I mean, it freaked me out. I, I, went, I ran out of the room and told my wife, I said, you know, crazy and they still talk about how them having dreams you know uh you know the other one will finish off you know they'll still have the same dreams now to this day it's really crazy to finish somebody's dream though that's something i've never heard yeah. of before that's and that's pretty cool yeah, you, yeah i mean yeah do yeah, you remember what the crazy, dream was man. about if you don't know actually asking. actually i have no no sir no sir i don't remember it's been you know it's like it's been 23 years ago but I mean, heck, I don't even. Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember that at all. I was just so freaked out over the over the whole thing. You know, yeah. it's like the other one. She was telling me the dream of the first one. Uh, she was telling me the dream, and then she like faded off, like you know, like faded off to sleep. And the other one woke up and finished. That's a that's a that's yeah. so cool. I, I, it was freaky. I, I ran out of that room like, I mean, like I'd seen a ghost. I was like, whoa. You know, the, <laughs> yeah, wife, the, wife, the wife was like, yeah, the wife, my wife was, you know, in bed. She's like, what's the matter with you? And I told her, she's like, whoa. I mean, we didn't, we, we you know, we sat up for like an hour, you know, like, really? I'm like, yeah. yeah and, I bet. And, and they would still, I mean, during the, uh, you know, while they were growing up, they would still wake up, you know, you know, and they'd say, yeah, I had this really weird dream. And the other one would, chime in and they're like and they look at each other and go wow you know 
and go, that's wow, gotta that's be, exactly, you know. That's got to be trippy. Do, do they ever, do they ever like, finish each other's thoughts sometimes? Have you ever seen that kind of happen oh, with them? Oh, all, 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 all the time. Yeah, they'll say the exact, they'll be talking and they'll say the exact same thing at the exact same time, all the time. Oh, my God. That's yeah. so cool. Well, yeah, you are I mean, definitely like unison, blessed, It's sir. like in stereo. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 well, I had the, I had the most wonderful girls and god could ever give me and you know oh i'm definitely blessed my whole life has been a blessing it's wonderful well so. thank you thank you for sharing <laughs> I that with tell us you that. no that's thank all you right, thank yeah. you sir really right. cool all what right, do you go. think rohan man that's pretty cool right that's awesome I wow think it, yeah well, that's funny it's funny to mention that is awesome and it, they could put it even stick it in twins the film down there with arnold yep. uh, arnold and then oh Danny yeah DeVito. Danny DeVito. DeVito. yeah yeah, well, they're twins. He feels it, doesn't it? It's going to run off with the money intern. It can feed him, getting beat up. It's like, I oh, love that movie. Going I really it's do. So I got to watch man. it again. Uh, it's brilliant. Five eight six it, area code. You're on the air. Who are we speaking with? This is James. What's up, James Salcedo? What's up, brother? Not much. I um I have a premonition uh, experience, and um, it basically the dreams. It was multiple dreams, and they happened. I don't know, months, years ago. And then they came true last weekend. Yeah, that's what um, happens to me so all the time, months ahead of time. What What was it? I mean, you don't have to tell was, us exactly it what like, it was, but what happened? Well, it was just mundane stuff, too. It was, so um, I went to, I, was, I went with my mom to visit my sister, who lives about two hours away from me now. She moved recently. Uh-huh. And on the way on the way there, we stopped at one of those rest stops. They call them rest stops in, here in the U.S. Just you know, yeah, yeah. Little bathroom, bath, restrooms, and everything. And, um, so I got into the the men's restroom. Everything I recognized everything the, the layout of the room, the the height of the well, one of the weird parts was the height of the like, the, the doors to the and the walls to the, all, all the uh, stalls. They were not your usual like up to the ceiling they were like i guess they were made so you could still be, like see people's heads above the edge of, uh, edge of the, the the wall what the hell um i right. recognized the the um, like the tiles and the walls so i recognized this place and as i was walking out i saw a couple other guys in there he um they had clothes on that i recognized as well dude that's so, a, that's a pretty specific premonition though man <laughs> Yeah. Now the other part was um, we we got to the apartment building, and as we were walking up to it, and then as I was we were leaving, going back down the stairwell, so that like I I recognized the exterior of the building, and then as we were leaving, going down the stairs to get back down to the ground floor, I recognized the stairwell. So, yeah. So little things like that too. Like said, yeah. And these were all separate dreams, but. I, but they were like in, you know, two of them were, were the same place, and one was not a place that wasn't that far from that place. But it's in a part of the state where my family does not live. Otherwise, we've never been there before. Man, but nothing big so, happened, right? Or like nothing no, that's crazy. Okay. I just wonder how many premonitions that people have are just just mundane things, and they don't, yeah. you know, if they're not paying attention. They don't even realize it. Yeah, well, you know, James Teresa was. What Teresa was saying that um oh well, she she said something that related to that oh yeah we're getting hints of it do you know what I mean and like you get those reoccurring dreams do you know what I'm saying so I don't yeah. know maybe that's coming through in the waking time and you're just getting parts of the same dream do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying I think a lot of times when people say they they've had yeah, deja yeah. vu they dream something that they forgot about dreaming they they saw into their own timeline or something you know mm -hmm. I've had it where I don't know if you guys have had this or you're talking about this, but I've had it where I've, I've daydreamed a conversation with somebody just random, and then I see him a couple of days later. We start having a conversation, and then I realize I'm having that same conversation from two days ago that I daydreamed, and I wonder if it's that because it's about to happen, and it starts bleeding through because you're close to it. Have you guys ever seen that that graphic film Waking Life? Uh -huh. no. Do you got to watch that? We watched it in Cast. There's this app called Cast that we watch on sometimes, and then we. We all watch a movie together, but it's a, it's a, it's a graphic film, not a graphic film, <laughs> a graphic film. It's a graphic novel. Yeah. Kind of like a graphic novel type film where this guy is in, stuck in a dream, like a false awakening. And he keeps running into these characters, 
but towards the end he starts to wonder if he's dead or not you know because he can't wake up it's crazy man it sounds a bit like the 13th floor you seen that film uh negative i need to watch it then that's that's about it's almost like inception where there's the 13th floor in this building and basically it's about a, a guy who works for a computer company and uh and they've just invented virtual reality and he was on a business trip and he comes back and his boss his top ceo has been murdered and he's the prime suspect and he's like well that was out of the contra so he goes into the virtual world because that's the last time where the guy goes and the base there the guy who's invented the virtual reality has left clues inside to explain that we've invented virtual reality but our world's a virtual reality and the people that are in the real world don't want us to know that. So they're panicking that we've invented virtual reality inside of virtual reality, which might make us think. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, and God, the yeah. Is, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's crazy. Right? And, but the character who's in the virtual reality machine, the barman, overhears it and reads the message that has been left for this guy. So we, And the message says, drive straight, go through all roads, pass all stop signs, go through all barriers. And the guy in the virtual reality, the barman, does it and sees that the world runs out. There's no more code. And and so the real guy from the real what? world has gone in and done the same thing. The real guy's done the same thing. And he's gone, if there's no code here, he's actually telling me my world's real. So he comes out of the virtual reality, does the same thing in his own world, same thing happens. There's no code. The world runs out. And it turns out the person that's murdered the boss was from the real, real world that's jumped into him like an avatar, used his body, murdered him. That's but, a trip. I got to watch that flick. He ends up getting awesome. killed, though. The guy who jumps in ends up getting himself killed. So the consciousness switches to the virtual reality character. He comes into the real world, and he's in the future. Crazy. Man, yeah, I got to see that. I got to see that movie. 13th, for real. 13th floor. 13th floor. I definitely got to watch that. Thanks, mm -hmm. James, for your call, brother. Uh, thanks for coming on the broadcast. Um, but that... I've watched so many. You, you do you ever watch that show Black Mirror? You've seen that one too. Uh, right? I've watched all of them when I was in the worst moment of my life, and it's probably the best, uh, the worst thing you might see. But it was actually <laughs> the best thing I ever did. It was the best thing I ever did because it got all of that poison out in one go. Yeah, hard, then right? they broke. They like had that groundbreaking show where Ryan used to play clips from it all the time on his show, where you could pick mm -hmm. the decisions that you wanted to happen in the show and. And it started oh, wigging me yeah. out too, because it's like it's something like something's controlling our every move, and it's just like Pac Man, uh -huh. where you're running from ghosts and you think you can go out the other side, yeah. and you don't yeah. die, you just back in the machine again. And then I'm like, what? Oh, and that, that bandit snatch was, one, yeah. Yeah, I remember I was choosing like which way to go, and I was starting to freak out. And then the dude just jumps out the window and dies, and then he, I'm like, what is going on? They, whoever wrote that episode of Black Mirror, was that was mm. brilliant. That was like genius. Yeah. I bet it was Doc Ram, and you don't want to tell us. <laughs> it probably was Doc Ram. <laughs> you know, I could hear him back there laughing like a hyena while he was writing it, probably. So <laughs> that man truly does though. talk to dolphins, I think. He, yeah, I think he does. And I was, I was, I was, I was kind of half joking when you said, oh, he's going to go off to Mars. And I commented in Discord, yeah, all oh, the dolphins follow him like Hitchhiker's Guide, but they probably would. Yeah, they definitely would. This we we got to have him back on the show. He's like one of my favorite people ever. Oh, yeah. We're talking about a guy that invented th invented ways for Navy SEALs to like train themselves in survival situations, oh, but also invented cavitational stuff in the lab. And we'll go out on a, and talk, and we'll tell you in the next five minutes about how he went on the beach during an OTO session and used some Aleister Crowley magic to invoke a demon. Right? Like he's not afraid. <sighs> to do crazy. everything and talk yeah, about it in 30 it minutes. Whole thing. It's crazy. It's, but I love that guy so much. I've learned so much just from listening to him and not understanding him. But then later on, it comes together, doesn't it, with other stuff. It's just it's crazy. Well, if you're planning on actually, I will tell you this too, because we kind of jumped off the dream subject, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this. If you're planning on like living in a breakaway society, uh, his books about po like power tools and how to live in the future, yeah. and all, it's... I think he was seeing ahead, like he was tapped into time or something. He said on Dave Cruz's show, he said, he said to him, he says, I, he said, I didn't do past life regression. That's for idiots. I did future life regression. So I knew what to do. <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa, that's, that's a proper Doc Ram thing to say in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's tapped in for sure, man. But, um, yeah, thanks, man. Like, I, the, yeah, thanks for coming on the show. I know you got a ton. Like, why I keep bringing Rohan back on here? One, it's, he's one of my favorite people in the world. 
but there's a ton of stories that he's still going to tell. So we're going to have you back too. <laughs> All right, brother. Yeah, I'll give you the big one next time. Yeah, for sure. And and if you guys look, if you guys want to support the show, please do because we could surely use it. I'm trying to get out of upstate New York and get down south, so any help would be much appreciated. You can go to lightingthevoid.com, uh, join the members. Thanks, Rivers, for signing up, too. Once we get all these shows into the network, I'll be in there more, too, where you, where you can get you know the uh, Outside the Shack podcast, where I open up to you guys just a little bit more. Uh, also, we do monthly tarot readings in there and astrological readings and stuff. And if depending on the package you pick, uh, you're going to get uh, some swag as well. And grab an altar box, right? We've got seven of them out right now. Um, it's the best tool for magicians if you want. Uh, I know I know you're getting one too, aren't you, Rohan? You're getting one. Oh, c- certainly am, brother. Yeah, I just need to learn it first. Well, that's what I was thinking about doing. I think, I'm think i thinking that I'm going to put out some like videos on how to do some stuff, just basic magic mm-hmm. stuff with it, instead just of just selling started. the box. It, even just a reading list to do me, you know. Yeah. Something like that, right? But if you mm-hmm. want to feel like Constantine, like the real Constantine, mm-hmm. this is what you need for sure. I feel like Constantine sometimes is carrying it around. And the next time I travel, I'm taking that sucker in through TSA, and I want to see what happens. I want to see them yeah, I think you should. Oh, open yeah. it up. I'd love to see that. You want to film that. You're not, you're not allowed to, are you? <laughs> what, but wouldn't that be, well, I don't think so, but that would be like the perfect promotional video for it. <laughs> have, I think have so. Have TSA open up the altar box right there while everybody's waiting to get on the airplane, you know? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. I'm totally taking that in the woods I am to use. I'm going to take pictures and everything. I'll do it upside down. <laughs> well, they're handmade. Um, so right now there's James is being, his is being made and another one's being made at the same time. And they're all a little bit different. They're all the same, but they're mm-hmm. all a little bit different too as far as the grain and like the blood wood and stuff goes, so. Uh, you know, it's part of the reason what it pulled me into it and I figured that's made by somebody that does this stuff anyway through you it's going to be magic before it turns up it yeah. is it's made by magicians actually to um and not only that I was talking to somebody when I thought about making it and then I hit him up and he's a an occultist a magician as well so there's a lot of magic involved in that there box honestly mm-hmm. and three's the magic number two magicians and then the magician that receives it one two three the magic number Yep, that's how it works. But we got to roll out of here. Ryan Gable is coming up next from the Secret Teachings on the Fringe FM. We got more, uh, more broadcasting to come to you tomorrow night as well, and uh, some bigger news. Hopefully by the end of the week. I don't want to jinx it, so I'll tell you guys what's going down next week. If it happened or not, just remind me. Rohan, remind me. Did it happen? Mm-hmm. Just ask me. Did it happen? And then I'll know what you're mm-hmm. talking about. Um, okay, okay, I'll note it. Yeah, because I don't want to jinx it. Thank you guys. We'll be back tomorrow night. And uh, have a good night. Sweet dreams, everybody.